Hello, this is Isaac from Turn Sounds. Electricity is in the brain, that's why it's called a brainstorm. Welcome to Just Keep Walking. This is a podcast focused on the Walking Dead TV show. Today we're here to talk about Season 11, Episode 6 called On the Inside. And uh, very glad you could join us. My name's Ben, <laughs> joined by... Isaac. And... Liam. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, we'll pretty much go straight into it. <laughs> um, Isaac, could you give us a bit of a spoiler warning? Oh, of course. And, and like... A runaway warning, yeah, perhaps, as well? That or, too, or just, that yeah, that too. Spoilers ahead! Scary. All right, well, uh, do you want to give us your thoughts, Isaac, I overall? Would, uh, I was going to palm this off to one okay. of you guys first. All right, all right. Why don't you start us off? It's okay, okay. Start okay. Us off. Um, Trying to weasel his way up. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, li- it, I liked it. It was well made, but... I know it's, gonna be a it felt it didn't quite feel right to me like as a part of the series for, for me this would work really well as a like a tales of the walking dead episode for the sort of anthology thing they're doing like if it was just here's what happened to connie and virgil in the meantime but but to put it in the middle of the main story uh, i'm not quite loving it um yeah that, that's just overall but we'll get into it a bit more huh. Yeah. Leah? <laughs> Similar train of thought. I really liked it, but there's always going to be buts in this. Uh, but it didn't feel like The Walking Dead. Yeah. It, yeah. It was a, it was good, just mm. bizarre. And well made and everything. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Like, very well made. Like, um, very enjoyable. Yeah. As as this whole season's been yeah. well made. Um, but yeah, definitely. Same thing you're saying there. I'm, I'm very glad now that I chose to go last. Well, okay. that you let me go last because okay. I'm the contrary one in this. Yeah, right. I thought that it was like very, very... Well, not Walking Dead in the sense that the rest of the show is, but it's yeah. kind of like what I expect the show would be about if I okay. was... If you told me, hey, it's a show about, a show about like zombies and survivors in the apocalypse, I'd watch this and go, yep, that's exactly what this was. Yeah, okay. So... I very much enjoyed the episode from a thriller point of view. Even though you had allergies, uh, <laughs> which caused you to, to sneeze in a way that it sounds a little bit like a, a girly scream, but you know, it's, girly. it's well, it's a sneeze, so it's uncontrollable. Don't listen to him; it sounded manly. Thank you. <laughs> and I maintain that I say this to my wife all the time. The whole purpose of an audible scream is to attract attention to yourself oh. for like safety and help and everything. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So. The louder you scream, probably the smarter you are, in a way. That's true. That's true. I want to say. Yeah. And um, and usually, yeah, your friends would come around by your side, support you and help you, whereas we just have a chuckle <laughs> because <laughs> we enjoy it. <laughs> well, if I may, from the very start of yeah. the episode, they, they open in on a spider in a oh, web and they that's... run through it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, ooh. <laughs> And I know that's a thing for you especially. Well, for me as well to an extent. That was growing up. We've got these big golden orb weavers uh, at the swamp we used to hang out with uh, all the time. And, uh, yeah, not fun. So not a fan of spiders? Not of running into them and having them on you. (laughs) It it honestly took me a minute after the episode to realise, oh, it it was probably just a fake prop spider. Yeah, probably. But... That it feels real, so yeah. uh, I don't know. They had it slightly maybe. moving, you know. Maybe, yeah. Animated, maybe. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, just could have been it, it could have been very. All right, do you want to uh, <laughs> go back? Let, go back. Let's if look you can, at this if you right can. now. Oh. Yeah. Okay, is it moving? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, it's got like a. Yep. <laughs> do you guys want to place bets? Do we reckon it's real or not? No, no, you wouldn't no. run into a real. Sp- well, it depends on the spider. I'm going to say I think it's a real spider. Depends. Like, if it would cause harm to it in this day and age, someone would have something to say about that. Like, no, you're going to disturb it. Leave Could, it be. Yeah, we've moved on from like the Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of era where, you know, Satipo, mm. like he's got the tarantulas all on his mm. back and stuff and they just kind of brush them off a little yeah. bit. Full on charging into it. But like yeah. as far as the animal cruelty thing, I, I feel like there's a certain point 
where it comes to insects and pests that it doesn't really matter because you'd just squash it. If, like every <laughs> <laughs> who wouldn't really. Someone would complain. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. Well, Someone I the, would get on their high horse. As the actor, I would say no. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Once they get past a certain size, I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I feel like we might have had this discussion. At least it's something I thought about because we used to make home movies in the swamp. Yeah. And we're, I, I, I remember thinking at least at one point, oh, man, it would make it so much more authentic if, like, Johnny or Lockie could, like, actually have a spider on them for two seconds if it wasn't a dangerous one. Yeah. And we could just, like, kill it straight after. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. I feel like you'd do it for the art. I'm of that opinion about snakes. Like long, yeah. non-lethal snakes yeah. or ones that have just been milked that you can like, you know, if you have to have it over them, fine, whatever, mm. you know. But spiders, they're unpredictable and they hold grudges. So, yeah. I've figured out a, a, a secret to counteract that. <laughs> Don't you worry. Okay. Don't you worry. We won't, <laughs> this is like the first <laughs> opening second of the episode. <laughs> Good dive. All right, well. There we go. Let us know what you thought on the opening second of the episode. And uh, I'm going to do my best to, in any interviews we have coming up, for anyone who is remotely involved in this episode, we've got to settle whether or not it was real. Okay. So so I'm locking in that it, I think it is. I don't think so. Let's Liam, can, do you no? mind? Can we like go back just one, one more, more time? time? Okay. Do you really want to look at it again? I really don't, but here I we go. I think it could be a real spider, <laughs> but that's yeah, go, like it wouldn't. She didn't run into an actual spider. No, I'm saying it's fake. Okay. You've got, for it to be able to move exactly like that, both the legs, it's just very convenient. That's true, actually. Yeah, you'd have to be very lucky. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, or it could be CGI. Hey, That's I what I'm saying, CGI. Okay. okay. Is it real yeah. spider? Not a real running into it. Yeah, CGI'd into it. Actually, oh. actually yeah, <laughs> composited. Composited layer of a real spider, which they've just, yeah. you know, they've actually filmed a real okay, spider. Okay. And then they've, yep, that's how they've done it. Yep. The spider is real, but it's not on set there. All right. It's back in its cabin. I'm going to stick with my guns and Make say they the actually ran into a real spider. It's a cool story. We'll yeah. see. We'll see. Yeah. Hopefully we'll settle this one day. Let us know your thoughts. <laughs> Tensounds.com, uh, contact. Uh, there's a contact page there. It, what, what's the email? Info. No. Oh, Turnsounds at gmail.com. I rushed into <laughs> it. Sorry. Turnsounds at gmail.com or on Facebook and Instagram. You can reach out to us there. Let us know. Who was the director of this episode? Greg Nicotero. Ah. Uh, that's been quite fun uh, now that we're getting the early episodes because they don't put it on IMDb usually because they don't know who's done it. Um, yeah, yeah. So we sort of get to find out each week. I, I've been enjoying <laughs> that at least. Um but, okay, so just to get into that for a minute, interesting uh, observation has been that usually Greg Nicotero will do the uh, the premieres and the finales and, like, either the mid-season finale or premiere. Um, uh, but for this one, the first two episodes, which was a part one, part two, had a completely new director who had never done anything on Walking Dead before. And then episodes three and four also were the same case with a different completely new director and now these last two episodes have both been greg nicotero which has been quite interesting because i know um he likes to do anything especially if it's like introducing us to a new something in the show like like commonwealth last week for example um and the first episode where they go into alexandria which is in the middle of a season uh, but he did that because it's it feels like a premiere to an extent of introducing this whole new cast of characters. So, um, so yeah, interesting. He likes to do that, and uh, and so that's why for me last week felt a lot like a premiere to an extent because we were going into the Commonwealth. It's like this whole new mm. whole new world. Um, and then he probably just wanted to have fun this week. <laughs> Uh, and I can see this one being fun to make. Yeah, go for um, it. Do you remember when we were like, uh, well, when you got the interview with uh, Laura Belzy? Yeah, yeah. And she was talking about like symbolism being a big, I'm yeah. pretty sure it was her, was that Mike? Yeah, for sure, yeah. Um, this Greg fella, is he big on symbolism as well? Because oh, I've, yeah. I've just had something maybe. hit my brain which has made me go, oof. So if you don't know this as well, he's the head uh, like makeup and effects person. So um, his oh. episodes usually have quite... Uh, creative walkers and stuff in them as well because he 
he's sort of the guy who puts all that together. Um, but yeah, I, I, I haven't noticed that at least. Uh, what do you reckon? Though? Well, if I had to like, you know, and you can pull meaning out of anything, <laughs> yeah, right? but cool. in particular, opening shot, them running um, through this spider web into this house filled with people who like walk like spiders, if you will, <laughs> and yeah. they're caught in their web, their trap, if you will. That's pretty good. So, yeah, I would say if anything, that's like a, huh, it's foreshadowing you're going into a sticky, yeah. sticky trap. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm so. Mm. Definitely. And and especially because it's it just seems slightly out of the ordinary, like, or at least it seems very specific. Like they didn't just randomly say, hey, the opening <laughs> shot should be a spider. Like, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. Good spot. Yeah. Alrighty, moving on from the opening two <laughs> seconds of the episode. <laughs> Long episode, so <laughs> many questions. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they're they're running through the grass. There's there's something moving around. Something's not quite right, and uh, and Connie seems very overly panicked, more so than you would be for walkers generally. So so there's something funny going on. Um, Shoot. I, I will point yeah. out she was bitten by the spider. She is now transitioning into Spider Woman. Mm. That's why she's okay. so panicky. You heard it yeah. in first. <laughs> Crossover. So now in uh, in Spider Man later this year, we're going to have Tobey <laughs> Maguire singing, <laughs> Andrew Garfield swings in, and then Connie swings yep. in. Yeah. Exactly. Perfect. Final theory on that, and I really will <laughs> after this. Spider Man or Walking Dead? <laughs> Walking Dead. They're positioning the shot, and then they look over three meters and go, oh, there's a spider nesting in the branches. Hey, I'll pay you. 50 more bucks if you run yeah. through the spider web. Like just a story as simple and, mm. you know, as that. I like it. Yeah. It's good. I who wouldn't want to do it for the story anyway? Me. Like, oh, I ran through this. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. 50 bucks. <laughs> That's a hard pass. Okay. Fair enough. Nope. All righty. Well. 150. We've got... Uh, uh, we'll come back to the Alexandria stuff later because that lasts like <laughs> two seconds. Yeah, it really um, wasn't a big part of this, was it? Uh, no, not really. Hey. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've got. Oh, actually, this was something because Kelly runs off. You bet ah. fifty bucks last week that Carol would run off. Now first I can, thing in the morning. I can see how you might think I said Carol, but it was actually Kelly. But I yeah. slurred my words. No, absolutely. I thought it was going to be Carol, but uh, you knew somebody had to run off early, surely. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that's bound to happen. <laughs> Even though it didn't really change a whole lot. No. Um, yeah. Which I'm glad about. I'm glad that because she ran off, you know, someone didn't die unnecessarily mm. or yeah. it was a cliche like she fell into the mud and would have gotten killed and then they happened to come along at the right time. True. Just yeah. turned out to be a bit embarrassing. She was just like, <laughs> you know, you're in the mud. Yeah, but it shows at least how much she's, you know, desperate to find her sister mm. and all that. So fair enough. Do what you got to do. Um, yeah, so we're, yeah, we're introduced to this whole weird house which they've uh, come across and uh, what it, it's interesting because this is the first we've really seen of seen of Connie and Virgil together he's saying she hasn't slept for days so they've obviously been together for a little while um yeah did you uh, I don't know how do you guys feel about Virgil just in general after this episode have you got any thoughts yeah, he's all right in my books yeah <laughs> Where, how did we leave him with Michonne saying, you're yeah. a jerk, but see ya? Pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah in short form. Um, yeah, so he's just left on the island by himself. Uh, yeah, so who knows how he even got a boat to get off. But Yeah. No, he's redeemed in yeah. my eyes. I yeah. mean, yeah. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I, I mean, this is, I guess... Fair enough of a way to go, like, you know, just r don't waste too much time showing how they got from A to B and all that. Yeah. Just throw them into the middle of a situation. Let's see how they get along. So that's fair. Um, maybe a, a slight bit more backstory of, like, at least where they're going, what they're doing in this point in time because we saw them find each other and have they just been running around in circles for the last week? Or There's a snippet uh, of dialogue right at the end which kind of, for me, did that trick. Okay, okay. And for, I wasn't paying enough attention to that conversation at the end, so <laughs> I'll need you guys to help me out with that. Okay. So, yeah, okay. Um, anything in particular worth noting or just... 
just about like Michonne pointing him in the right direction and that's when he happened to come across her and right. Connie and, and that's why he feels now that it's his duty to do something right and pass on the favour or whatever he said. So okay. for me, that's enough. Like they ran into each other by chance yeah. and he feels like he needs to help her out because she would have been in a real bad way when he found her. Yeah, okay. She was. She was like bordering on passing out, wasn't like she? Delirium, yeah. 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 No, that's fair, yeah. And now I'm seeing that sort of, yeah, in their relationship throughout the episode that he's really just there trying to help her out. Like he kind of wants to do his own thing, but he always ends up going with what she wants to do. So, mm. no, fair enough. Um, yeah, we're back to Daryl with the Reapers as well and seeing what's going on there. So they're, they're interrogating this random this guy. Maggie's friend number five um, who... I don't even recognize really, but uh, no. but I guess he was part of Maggie's group. Um, yeah, so I mean, it, it was interesting because because Daryl's definitely got a bit of a past. Even in season two, we saw him with Randall. He was like beating up the guy, so he's he's he has done this before. He's not just completely bluffing, but uh, uh, but you could tell that yeah, it's it's definitely not him. Even a few points where he like. Yelled, he's like, shut up. It's yeah. like, he's putting on an act. Um, but yeah, any thoughts on this whole scene, the interrogation, and the finger? I got one note. Yeah. Have to go for it. Go for yeah. It. Um, uh, the finger that he cuts off, first of all, this whole episode, is this like R rated this episode or something? Because it. Yeah, I mean, or at uh, least the, MA. the series is R now in general. So. Um, Okay. Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, pretty violent stuff, man. Like Definitely. close up of the fingernails, like teeth and fingernails yeah. always get yeah. me like squeamish. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I, I wondered whether it was like a just a random thing, but it's something that I just noticed. Uh, I don't know if, about you, Ben, um, in rock climbing. Yeah. But I find that the ring finger is probably the most useless finger for me and just with gripping things in general. And that was the finger that he cut off. Really? Uh, and so I wondered if it was like a, if you had to lose any finger, he chose like the most potentially useless one. Which well, you'd let's be say the little finger. You'd be tempted yeah. to think that, but being the one that goes furthest down, it like has the ability to wrap around something and like close for climbing specifically, maybe. But I don't know. In general, I feel like index finger is pretty good. Oh, I've shoveled a, a lot of dirt in my day. And, you know. Oh, okay. Well, hey, that fair enough. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean. Uh, I'd be pretty devastated losing any oh, finger. Really, absolutely. So yeah. It does the job. But yeah, no, good thought. Good thought. But um, I was surprised he committed to it. Like I thought that they were going to call him up. Like they say, like yeah. everything's a test. So like, yeah. My main thing with this is just what's his end game? Like where, yeah. where's he going with this? He's not going to stick with them forever, is he? Uh, like is he going to earn their trust and then betray them? Like, like what's he planning on? Is the lady's name, what's her name? Leah. Leah. Yeah. I think, like, get in with Leah, get her out to join him, and then join up with the group. Yeah. Or forget Fair her enough. and go back to Connie. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. <laughs> Leah? Nah. Yeah. yeah. Go away. Because really that, this is where you need to start asking that stuff because if he's going to go all out and sort of cross some moral boundaries to convince these guys he's with them, then there's got to be a reason for that. You've got to be going somewhere with it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, he does say that, doesn't he? He says, I'm here for you, I'm here with you, and I don't care about anyone else. Yeah. Whether that's an act, who knows? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, there probably will be some truth to it, wouldn't there? Yeah. Definitely. He cares about it, yeah. yeah. Um, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. All righty. Uh, I see why you like Pope, though, like... Um, yeah, it's, it's just there's something about him. Hey, he's very controlled and cool. Uh, do you remember? So uh, weird throwback to yeah. Iron Man three. The Ben Kingsley plays yeah, the Man- Mandarin. Mandarin, yeah. He screams of that to me, where it's yeah. like all an act, yeah. and it's all like you know, I am your father, and you know, <laughs> okay. all of this, and it just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if he hadn't already like Daryl reminded us, like stomped a guy's head in the fire then I would think it was all just a big tough guy act and he's secretly a wuss. Oh, right. But he has shed blood, so that's kind yeah. of done with. But yeah. Okay. 
No, I, I like him. And yeah. at the end of this episode, that's there's something that's really sinister going on now. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll come back to that. Hey? But and, and it's been done in memes anyway, but he more and more now to me looks like the Pringles guy. <laughs> 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 Just like that, he's no longer threatening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if he survives another 30 years, he'll be the Monopoly guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's just going to yeah gra- graduate from the, the beanie <laughs> to a top hat. Sky's um, the limit. That's great. <laughs> something more threatening than him, though, is this mirror in the bathroom that Connie's oh. looking at. Um, and, and this, actually, as a scare, because uh, you and I have had this conversation. Oh, I think Liam's been there as well. That You know, we don't really like jump scares. No. Especially when they're just cheap. Um, but I do enjoy... A clever jump scare, um, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. Jaws is one where the guy pops out from the boat. Just because oh. it's the last thing you're expecting. You expect the, sh- the shark maybe to come out or something else, and then it's this this dead guy pops out from the other side of the screen. And and so it's you know the misdirection's cool and alien as well um, because it's halfway through like a music cue in the vent. And the yeah, yeah, in the yeah. vent. Yeah, and you know it's going to happen at some point, but you don't think it's going to happen quite yet. And so the music's still building, and then he turns around and it's right there. It catches you by surprise. So I like it when it's clever like that. And this I thought was the same thing because we were all. All of us were thinking the same thing, and we said it like yeah. she she opens the mirror, <laughs> and you know that the second she closes, yeah. there's, there's going to be a person behind her. Especially with the fact that she's deaf, and yeah. it's all based yeah. on visuals. Um, yeah. And then for that not to happen, for it for to be something else behind the mirror was uh, was quite clever. I thought. Well, the one reason I thought it was acceptable because she's walking down the hallway and slowly yeah. the music fades out, the sound fades out, and like all of us, I was like, "Come on, don't do this to yeah. us!" Like, but then I realized, like, actually, she's deaf, isn't yeah. she? So like, this is what she's hearing. And that and then, low rumble comes yeah. in that reminds you. Oh, okay. And so as she's walking along there, and actually once we've seen already behind her, we at like the very like bottom sixth part of the screen we see like this something move along yeah like a guinea pig or something almost, you know like or a rat or something yeah and so we we know that something is out and about yeah and then like you say so she walks up to this and then it's funny because she even does like a little sign to herself in the mirror like you know <laughs> you look just terrible or something <laughs> yeah or something something like that yeah um but the way the shock I was expecting was that something is going to like jump out at her, but it will still be silent, and so yeah, it won't right, be as yeah. terrifying for us. Sure. But then what we got, man, like the <laughs> like Freddy Krueger eyes, pretty much like yeah. all yellowed and like yeah, right, disgusting. Uh, I actually thought it might have been an animal, given the color of it. I'm like, is that a wolf or something? No, no, that just triggered one of your sneeze allergic reactions well like that's the last thing i need man is to be thinking that there's things in the walls yeah like it just opens a whole new potential of like uh i'm already afraid of the dark enough as it is like jeez oh no I gotta say that like, I love that it was all sort of like y- you're not sure if it's actually real though. Mm-hmm. At that yeah. point in time, you're like, is she just hallucinating because she's tired? Yes, yeah. that was terrifying. But did it really happen? True. Yeah, and I we've really seen liked that. bits of that before with Carol hallucinating yeah. and stuff, and so it's not unseen in the show. So it's like, well, they could be doing this whole thing. It's just a dream. It would be weird, but like, yeah, it keeps you guessing. Mm. It's cool. One, um, before I lose the thread yeah. on it, um, one of the things that uh, Eugene brings up when we first get introduced to the Whisperers yeah, and he hears them speaking, but he thinks that the Walker's talking and he's trying to explain to the group that, you know, oh, they were whispering to one another. Yeah. And they're like, Eugene, you're crazy. And he's like, well, look, these are dead guys walking. This is already mm, crazy yeah. enough. And he, he makes, and this is the point I'm bringing, he says it kind of makes sense in their evolution that speech would be the next sort of thing. Sure, yeah. Um, and so I was prepared to believe with these freaks in like in the walls and everything that they yeah. were just like more sophisticated, if you can call them that. Yeah. Or more like um, coordinated yeah. walkers that yeah. were just like, and like that that's the next stage that they can like, you know, crawl fast and jump and... Sure. Which, thank goodness, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that yeah. thought did cross my mind too. I'm like, please let this not be the case because mm. it would just feel really bizarre. It changes yeah. everything, yeah. yeah. 
but yeah, no, let's keep that going because I, I wanted to to get into that for a minute as well. But um, yeah, like that that was the thing um because there'd been like one photo released of one of these guys and that shot in the trailer which we talked about already. Of, yeah, like this is something different. Um, it's it's not walkers it'd be a stretch if it was people which it turns out that it is um and i i'm not buying it no yeah spe- the main thing for me is that they're crawling on all fours like people no matter how crazy you get it's just not practical i don't think you're going to get to the point where you're doing that for stealth i would say yes the guy when um virgil is going towards the wall which is which connie's right. knocking on as he's crawling out you're like okay so you'd be that sure yeah. yeah but down the stairs come yeah on. exactly yeah um oh. so yeah that, that's the thing sure devolving humanity yep interesting cool you could go with that but uh but not to the point where you completely lose like uh, it's just the function of your body it doesn't yeah. change like it's not going to be any easier to go on all fours well just in general like those sorts of people would not survive no yeah but how would they be able to not only coordinate luring people into their trap or sort of herding them <laughs> into their trap like, they can't how, even walk yeah right. <laughs> like they would have been torn to shreds by walkers or other uh, groups like the, when I found out that there were people I'm like they're people like, and they're on all fours just turn around and soccer kick them in the face <laughs> <laughs> the the thing that could have sold it for me is if the passengers in the wall you could only crawl through and so they're used to crawling yeah. and then they've just yeah. stuck with it. But Connie was walking through it, so so there's no need to yeah. really. Or are they just trying to like embrace their primal type, you know, Neanderthal? Like there's Maybe. a bunch of bones in their basement that they're, <laughs> you know, they, of all animals and humans. So like they're eating everything. Mm. And the one stupid line that the guy says, <laughs> did you hear what he said as he was tackling Virgil? Oh, he said oh, a line. I, huh? I didn't realize he spoke. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah like, there was something. One what word. Did he say? Oh, hungry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, okay. So if you're that basic that you can only say the things you're that you're smart feeling. enough to like move the walls and yeah. everything in yeah. this house. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. That was terrifying as well. The wall shut and then you're divided. Yeah. Oh. I mean, yeah. Two notes I have for that scene. Yeah, is, sure. If you've ever played like, well, we've all got siblings in. Yeah. If you've ever run away from a sibling and like shut the door and barricaded, <laughs> it's the worst thing because as soon as they go away, it's kind of like they've got a chance to hide from you and then pounce on you yeah. as you're like looking around the corners. Yeah. So I know Connie was terrified, but like face them head on, I reckon. And yeah. Yeah. Drop Big Mo on him or something like, you know. <laughs> uh, different different yeah. fractions, yeah. So, so I almost now would have preferred it to be some other version of Walker maybe just, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't have liked it really either way, but it, I'm just not buying it that it, it's people. Hey, so Left alone, I guess for years, people can go pretty nuts. Not one the, or two, yeah. maybe. Yeah, my and argument like, still crawling stands, around in though. your underwear, you're gonna get yeah, cold. Tarzan vibes. Yeah. yeah, my argument still stands. Like, yes, you can argue that they all sort of devolved a bit. They're all this, that, and the other. But if they did get to that point, they would have died. Yeah, there's no chance they would have survived. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, it, uh, we'll we'll keep this very brief. But uh, the descent, you told me to watch this, yeah. and it was terrifying. Exactly <laughs> yeah. same thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but same thing, but in that it makes sense because the idea of that is that they're cavemen who got trapped in a cave and so they've kind of evolved over the last 10,000 years or whatever Something, yeah. to, to live in a cave system and so that's why they behave and act differently. It's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Well, the longest to our knowledge that the apocalypse has been going is like maybe 10 years or something. Yeah, yeah. 15. It's going to take a bit more than that, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways... Final note on that for me, yeah, for with it. Connie being trapped in the wall, trying to get his attention, mm. uh, do you guys, and probably a good thing to know, do you yeah. know the SOS um, oh, Morse code? Yeah, easy. But she wasn't doing that. So, no. <laughs> all right, let's see if I've got this right. <laughs> oh, I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> there that's you go. It, that's it. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, she should yeah. have just been tapping SOS. Yeah. I that's think true. first place, yeah. 
Or just like stick something out of the hole, like a bit of her hair, but like <laughs> wiggle her hair or wiggle a bit of that paper. It's a small slot or... that she was peeking through, I guess. Mm. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to remember. There's a small chance Virgil was using Morse code or something because it's what the sailors use and all that. It is on this island. Uh, I can't remember for sure. Don't know. Uh, but yeah, smart. Because uh, because that, that was a bit of a thing. How like he didn't know. If it was her in the wall. Yeah, or, yeah. Or, yeah. Um, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> All right, so it's back to the, just to the Reapers for a bit, um, where they're, they're searching the town, searching this house. Um, yeah, I, I think Daryl, uh, as he's trying to, you know, encourage him to, oh, let's keep looking or let's stop here for a bit, um, that uh, I think at a few points he realised he pushed it too far and so then had to turn it into just like a, you know, testosterone thing yeah, fighting against macho. this guy. And then that made Leah believe, oh, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> like then it sort of turned it into a different issue to throw them off the scent. So I thought that was quite clever. Um, yeah. But yeah, any thoughts on that whole thing and how it unfolded? Two for me. Yeah. First of all, the gun that the guy has got as he's walking in is yep. an old style blunderbuss, which I think is just awesome. Oh, okay. One of the things with a long tube and kind of, um, flared out yeah, right. right at the tip. Really old style, just sort of one shot spread um, buckshot type thing. Yeah. yeah. Cool weapon. We haven't seen one of those to my knowledge yet in this. Nice. And it's a early days firearm. Yeah. Um, what was the second one? Oh, yeah. Daryl's standing on the carpet, like standing on the thing you're trying to protect or lure someone away from. Yeah. Rookie mistake. Right. Like, like 101, <laughs> the thing that if somebody's trying to hide something from you, Tech, um, self con- subconsciously, they will be protecting it however they may. Like if you've got something yeah. in your pocket, you might have your hands in your pocket or like uh, body language says a whole lot. And so yeah. him like standing yeah. directly on the thing, he should have been on the opposite side of the room and they never would have even seen it, I reckon. Okay, fair enough. But it's in the spare of the moment. That's the thing, subconsciously you do it. So Yeah. Oh, good call. Well, good to know if you're over in that situation. <laughs> yeah. Lesson learned. Um, uh, uh, we probably don't need to come back to this because, you know, it's all pretty much just one big scene. Um, it, it just, that was the main thing I didn't like too much at the end when they open it up and they're gone and they've snuck out. That was a bit cheap for me. Uh, like it, if they had set it up that the crew needed time to get out or needed an opening because they needed to make some noise and so Daryl was distracting the other guys, like yeah, then it would have felt earned, but it was just completely out of nowhere and they were sitting around before and then mm. like why weren't they escaping earlier? So, yeah. yeah. Oh, well. Uh, but, yeah, we got... Oh, okay, so this scene was... Uh, this is Kelly finding the, the notebook um, in Connie's bag. Just a, a very random note was uh, how they've got the wires around the campsite here with the the tins. We saw that a bit in season four, and I thought that was just nice little uh, little detail to put in there, bring back. Uh, is that what you would do, Isaac, if you were camping in an apocalypse? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'd be I'd be dead long ago. Yeah, fair enough. And walking. Uh, I don't know. I, I got faith in you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what do we got? Yeah, we got them running through the house. I, I think it, it was a good uh, use of the the sound disappearing when you're going yeah. into her point of view. It's always a matter of not doing it too much, but doing it enough that it's effective. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, did, did you have any thoughts on that? Was it a good amount or would you have I done thought it so. differently? Like, like you said before, like because she's deaf, like it... it you sort of experience it from her point of view. And you hear a lot of people talk about how with horror and thriller, music is key. Yeah. Like it was great to see that it was still super effective with only yeah. like that ro- that low rumbling sound. Yeah. yeah. It was still very eerie, still very suspenseful. Or you know, something, yeah, passes over and you hear just like a whoo as yeah. it passes. Yeah. yeah. So, ooh. And there were a couple of points then later on where – we weren't hearing any sound effects and it was went with that, but then the music still played because that, that makes sense. Like the music's not in the scene. So, um, but you know, it's more than, than the feeling you get, what Colin, Connie's feeling. Um, but yeah, they really got to, I imagine it was probably 
fun to score this episode and just go all out with some, you know, horror stuff that they don't usually do. It, it sounded different, but uh, definitely worked for because the enemy was so different. So yeah. I was a big fan of uh, particularly at first the cinematography was annoying me. It seemed very basic for the episode, but then the minute we got Ooh. into with Connie, um, like like her and the ducks and everything, it was pretty much always her walking toward the camera and then backing away which to me gave off a really panicked um, yeah, right. okay. feel about it. And she's a brilliant actor. Like, mm. yeah. man, that you can see the panic and the horror in her face. Yeah. Uh, well, that that's the thing, uh, especially with deaf people. And uh, I don't know, I think it was, yeah, actors in particular, I've heard this about that. They're really... Um, you know, they because they have to communicate with their face and eyes a lot more than the rest of us do. They sort of see people who can hear as like quite closed off emotionally with what we show on our faces because we don't mm. we just mm. use words for the most part. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. You you'd have to pay a lot more attention to that. So yeah, that's definitely a strength for for her. I reckon. Yeah, is she actually deaf? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. She is. Yeah. So she can't ever listen to our podcast. Yeah. Oh, All no. Right. <laughs> we can uh, get a, what, transcribed. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. You should have this on, on YouTube, like, captioned. Yeah, okay, there you go. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Um. Okay, I'm going to go off very briefly. <laughs> I, I won't go into this too much, but it's kind of relevant to the episode. I watched... Uh, Sound of Metal the other day. Uh, I definitely recommend a really good movie, but she's in it. It's about uh, uh. a heavy metal drummer who goes deaf and then has to sort of go to this deaf school and, and learn how to, you know, adjust his life and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, really good movie anyway. Um, and that, I thought, was another good sort of example of of using the point of view thing where you hear what the main character's hearing but not doing it too much because there's... Yeah. Uh, like there's sort of parts of it where uh, I won't give too much away, but it would be really annoying if they did it for too long. Uh, but then there's sort of just enough so you can hear what the character's going through, but it's not really annoying to watch the whole movie mm. with, you know, rumbling and stuff like that. So. But but that's also not like a horror or thriller setting, is it? Sure. I mean, no, it's not. Yeah. In this particular case, when it's prolonged, you know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds in, like yeah. I can hear myself swallow and like my heartbeat <laughs> yeah. starts to pick up. And, sure. Ugh. But then that effect would be lost if it was like five, 10 minutes of, of the episode, then probably the novelty would wear off. And uh, yeah, so... No, it was a good balance, I thought. Um, yeah, we got we got the crew back, uh, Magna, Connie, Kelly, and all that. So, yeah, I mean, she falls in the mud. <laughs> good job. Not quite as uh, good as Father Gabriel's fall in the mud. So <laughs> he takes the prize for that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, there's there's this whole basement that Connie finds, and yeah, that's scary because there's all bones and stuff one, um, one technical note i might have just had as like a set design thing yeah. all of those bones were very dried out and picked clean mm-hmm. it could have been nice to see some fresher bones maybe with a tiny bit of meat still on them yeah um yeah just yeah. like as a you know no good call actually general sort of dank feeling in the bottom of the basement yeah fair enough because was yeah otherwise dry and dusty no that makes sense yeah to show that it's like something active rather than something you know, people died five years ago yeah, and yeah. bodies have been left here. Yeah, good point. Um, well, maybe... I, maybe I he said listen. hungry, didn't he? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, well, they haven't eaten in ages. Or, like, do you think they're actually, like, eating people or killing people and that's what's going on? Or maybe is it something else? Because uh, that's a good point you make there. Well, what are you inferring here? Oh, may, like that is, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this, but maybe it was intentional. I'm giving them the benefit of the of the doubt because, yeah, if they were actually cannibals, then you'd have some fresher bodies down there and there would be more of them because there's only like, you know, a few, yeah. a few people's worth of bones. There was one on the ground in the lobby right at the end. Yeah. But that's about it. Yeah. That was a that was a walker, wasn't it? The one that came in with them. 
Oh, actually, you're right. Yeah. Oh. You're so right. Yeah, true. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was one thing that I was maybe expecting at the end, uh, uh, just coming back to what we are talking about, are they walkers, are they people? Like when she went and put guts on herself, it would have been interesting then if they like backed off or they weren't interested mm, anymore. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's a way to go. That's where I thought um, that was going. I'm like, yeah. Oh. Different? Yeah. You yeah, can't eat me. I'm tainted meat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, people. <laughs> um, but then she opens the door. And I mean, like, if the door was open, I would have just run out before and taken my chances <laughs> with the walkers. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but. Uh, Beautiful, beautifully scored that scene. I would have liked yeah. it if it was a bit louder than music. It kind of, for me, it kind of just fell a little bit under the, all the screams and sound effects and all of that, but. Yeah, I, I didn't notice it. I'll have to go back and have a listen, but yeah. It, it was like, it was quite um, powerful, quite emotional, and it was like a, quite a victory piece. Like, um, as she opens the door, this yeah, is, yeah. I'll see if I can pull it up. Yeah, know. directly. Do you know what I'm thinking? Yeah. Oh, you got the sound on I there. do have it hooked up to cool. this. Would it be at all possible for you to like Zoom meeting record this screen so that we can capture all of this play pause? Because this would be sweet to even just to have the stills match as we're talking about it. Maybe, yeah. Um, to like, be completely honest, part of it is a matter of how much time <laughs> I'm willing to put into editing, which at the moment isn't very much. Cause understandable. Uh, other work uh, to put the time into. but um, If people were to plug in, but Liam. If yeah. people were to plug in, I could make some room. I plugged in. Way. What are you talking about? No, no, I'm, I'm passing like, if they were to plug ah. in, Liam, what would happen? They would get a lot of benefits, mm. multiple benefits, so many benefits, I, I can't even list them all. <laughs> Good <Sweet>. enough for me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you guys should absolutely plug in. Definitely. Turnsounds.com. And uh, it's a way to support the show because yeah. there's some costs and things that go into what we do here and also just to, to be more of a part of it and definitely uh, you'd get a say in the, some of the stuff we cover and... Yeah, we just love to have you as part of the community. So there we go. But Family. I, yeah, I think that meme's outdated now, but I like No, it. no, no, not the dumb. Oh, okay. Family, like Rick, my family. Oh, yeah, okay. Brother. I yeah. found them. Be our brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta, we gotta work on the website. Uh, here's, here's the scene as she opens the door for the music. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even notice it, hey, but you're right. Because this, this It's like, like kind of, of victorious, like, we're safe. kind of dark as well. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. But yeah, can you see that if being like a, maybe even a little bit above the sound effects and so everything else kind of falls away and it just washes yeah. over the scene? Yeah, for sure. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. It, because I mean, you like know. you really got to pick and choose when you decide to do that That's with a scene, it, like, yeah, and yeah. they have done that in I couldn't tell you when, but yeah, I, that could have been one of those moments I reckon to cut all the sound effects or just no, no, to no. have the music over uh, uh, overpower them like a bit more, like eighty percent music, yeah, or okay. 70, 70, 30 type, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I'd be I'd be interested to see it, definitely. Mm. Uh, yeah, well, speaking of music, actually, uh, there's two things. One, we'll come back. This is uh, Virgil and Connie's conversation, which I missed a bit of what they were saying because I was thinking about the music. <laughs> but I got, and that's the thing, I got the feeling of the scene, which is, you know, what the music's conveying. Um, but were there any important details there that, that I didn't... Between their conversation? Get? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Am I thinking of the right conversation where he's saying, you have to go on? And yeah, she's that's like, the one. Together. That's the one. Yeah. Like three different times that it's said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that was the gist. Virgil was like, I did bad things. I must do this. You must go on. No matter what, you must go on. Yeah. And she was just consistently going, stop being a ghost. We're going together. Mm. It's kind of like, it feels yeah. like you think you're going to die very soon, Virgil. Yeah. 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 Well, well, actually, like, as yeah, as you guys are saying that, that maybe speaks more to like just where his character's at, and it makes a lot of sense that he's really, you know, wanting to make up for his past sins and stuff like that. So he sees this as an opportunity where 
as they're escaping, he might be able to take the fall to save Connie. So, yeah, okay, that that make that works for me. Hmm. Um, but I I wanted to note the the music here. There's it's hard to know sometimes when there's a one off clip in an episode whether it's just like just a nice bit of music for that moment or if it's going to sort of establish a theme going forward. Uh, but this one was definitely something that was used in the scene where they're leaving Virgil behind on the island. Um, I'll just play this bit of music here from 10.13. And, and it came back over their conversation here in this moment. So it's sort of like a, a redeemed... Yeah. Not not redeemed Virgil necessarily, but yeah, this reformed Virgil. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I thought that was quite nice to bring that back, and then yeah. it went into more of a piano playing that. Um, but yeah, no, nice little bit of music, which is sort of a standout in the episode anyway. But it, it's good that they brought it back. Um, not, e- not even from like a laziness point of view, but it must just be nice for the composers sometimes when it's like we made this before and it really fits here. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, so that's cool. I wonder okay. if they make it like in advance. Go, let's let's compose something that will actually fit a variety of different situations that this character could be in, like reflection type. Yeah, mood. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I mean, really, for the most part, with like a melody, you can play it in any number of ways. Like even mm. the whispers theme, there's a more emotional version of it yeah. that, that works for dramatic scenes and then there's a really scary version of it. So And, it, and it's still the same like, yeah. few notes, so, however many there are. Um, yeah, but no, that, that's definitely an interesting thought. Go, go uh, if you're interested in more of that, go for my Sam Ewing interview. He talks all about that stuff. There we go. I, 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 yeah, sorry, I'm... Yeah. Good point. Good point. <laughs> I can go here. I, I was going to say the same thing about the Kylo Ren theme, but yeah, I realized yeah. we're not talking Star Wars here. No, was... Shout I've, out to I've gone off on a few tangents in this oh, episode. Yeah, yeah. You have the right. Well, to. you know how Kylo Ren's like menacing thing does that da, 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 da thing? Yeah. They flipped it around when he turns good, so it turns into the da, 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 and it becomes yeah. a much more heroic nice. thing. Nice. So, yeah, I completely agree. Melodies, you can. Mm. Are we glad we brought this up? <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, that's cool. That's cool. And it's, it's fun whenever they do that. Oh, no. Astromech podcast. Go no, check it out. On that's good. Okay, so yeah, end of the, the Reapers thing is um, it very much seems like Pope kept interrogating this guy, found out about Daryl being a part of the group. and uh, We think. It, it, that's what I'm saying. It seems like that. And it seems like Pope's making it really obvious that that's the case, but then it sort of makes me think maybe he's he's bluffing and yeah. trying to act as if I know something that you don't want me to know, Daryl, but I'm not going to say what it is. It's the best he doesn't feeling, actually know isn't it? it is. yeah. Pretending you know something and watching people squirm. Yeah. So maybe he's just, yeah, doing it and, and he's going to sort of push that button a few times to see if Daryl cracks and yeah, and shows anything. Um, That's my guess. Yeah. I don't think so. I think it's exactly what it looks like. Especially you think he when, does know? Well, he talks to that other guy whose name I don't know and he does like a <laughs> and like looks over his shoulder. It just seems too like... Uh, like he, I agree. He's making it so obvious to Daryl and stuff. But like maybe that's exactly right. Well, it, yeah, you're right. Like see what happens next. But I actually mm. do think he knows something. Yeah, okay. He wants to see what Daryl will do. Uh, do you think he knows specifically that Daryl is a part of the group? Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see where it goes. Uh, interesting. Mm. And, and it'll say a lot about Pope as well and who he is and what his tactics mm. are. So we'll see. What is the it? actual end game is. Mm. Yeah. Is it just Pope or the Pope? Just, I, I'm just calling him Pope. Okay. I think it's that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because Pope marked you. True. Not the Pope, no. Okay. Oh yeah. One, one's one's a title, one's wrong. a name. So yeah, I'm going with name, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, one other bit of music was here when uh, Kelly and Connie uh, reunite. Yeah, that was beautiful. Yeah. 
I, I was actually like, terrified. <laughs> terrified? Yeah. Why, I, is, why I had, is that? Like, the way, I don't know if it was <laughs> the camera angles or... I, I'm like, don't you dare. I thought one of them was going to die. Oh, right. I like they're both looking at each other longingly. It's heartfelt. I don't know what it was, but I'm yeah. like, don't you dare kill either of them. This is a beautiful moment. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was terrified. Yeah, right. Fair enough. It didn't cross my mind, but yeah, I okay. could see it happening. No, it's something to me this show has always done so well is reunions of people like long lost. Yeah, for sure. So... This for me, I was like, you can't. Yeah, I my mind wasn't even there, Liam, because I was like, they wouldn't do that to us. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, but but that bit of music I really liked. It almost um, it, like it, it's definitely new, not something we've heard before, and hopefully it's something that's maybe becomes a theme for them potentially. But it almost if if you could make a sound that sounds muted, yeah. but obviously isn't because it's sound. I think it. It hit that really could you well. could you play that one more time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's kind, uh, of, kind yeah. of sounds like a faint echo it's of something. A ton of reverb, but yeah, yeah, it does feel it's, very. It's muted. almost as if they've dropped the dampener pedal on the mm. piano yeah, as well. Like, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah, interesting. But whatever it is, it's it's really cool. I yeah, like it. very well done. Hmm. All right, well, that's it for the end of the episode, I think. Did you guys have any other thoughts or anything we haven't covered so far? One other one. Yeah. Just lastly, and I struggle. I can't remember. I can't believe this happens every time. When I go to reference, I'm going to call him Fly Fishing Hat Guy from like season one and two. Oh, uh, Dale. Dale. Oh, I was right, like, right, it, right, right. Uh, Dale, thank you. Do <laughs> you remember how he meets his demise? Yeah. Yeah. Old, um, In the field. Yeah, well, for Somewhere our listeners, right. what happens? Wait, what? For our listeners. Oh, okay, right, yeah. And then shot. Yeah. No, he gets like his tummy ripped apart. Yeah. Like oh, yeah, the, he does. Oh, uh, God. Yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah. just bit. Yeah, if you recall, he's having like a struggle and one's like on the top of him for ages and then it just rips apart his like yeah. tummy mm. cavity or something. Mm. At the That's start right. of this episode, you've got the same thing happening with Virgil uh, when they tumble into the building. Oh, okay. He's got this walker on top of him, and I and they've really only done that once with Dale, haven't they? Yeah. And I wonder if they regret it or if it's kind of like a yeah. I, I mean, the the season one and two rules are very different. True. Um, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, there's all like, you know, people. Well, I mean, the big thing is Morgan's wife like opening the door. Walkers yeah. would never do that now. Um, one picks up a rock to try and smash yeah. down the window. And, yeah, exactly. And they like climb over the fence at one point and all these sort of things that they wouldn't do anymore. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say I would just, uh, I can't think of the words, but throw it off as one of those things. Right. Yeah. Right. Discount it. Cool. There you go. All right. Yeah. Um, but, uh, well, that, that sort of ties into a, a little segment we like to do called Previously. Uh, yeah. oh, Liam, why don't you do the intro? All right. Who, who am I trying? To... I'm not sure. I can't remember who did it this time. I don't think there was one. Was there? Yeah, there yeah, was. Was it? There was. Oh, yes, there was too. Who was it? There was too. All right. Let's have a listen. We make Liam do the voice of whoever does it at the start of the episode. Let's see. Sponsor is supposed to good. <laughs> Could have done <laughs> so that. So many times. <laughs> you need to tell me something. There's a woman. She's the leader. Previously on The Walking Dead. Ah, Carol. Oh, Carol. Yeah. <laughs> Yuck. Yeah, the rules are the rules. <laughs> All right. All right. I will sleep in my bed the way I made it. Let's right. do this. Previously on The Walking Dead. Do you know? Yeah. Huh. yeah. As far as all the other ones I've done, that was actually somewhat decent in my ears. Yeah, fair enough. Compared to the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to be really authentic, Carol, then you would go previously on AMC's The Walk and then go off and do your own thing. <laughs> <laughs> Walking off. Have yeah. someone killed in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of dynamite goes off halfway through the sentence. <laughs> Oops. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, nicely done. Yeah. So, so this little segment at the end is just uh, a chance to talk about the show prior to season ten, which we haven't covered in this podcast. Uh, and so, so we are almost able to come back to Dale and season two a bit there. But uh, any anything goes really. Talking points, stuff you liked. Uh, it can be long, can be short. I'll start us off. I was watching the other day. Uh, the finale for season eight. Um, just you know, I've been going through a bunch of the audio coming through Snowball recently. Fight. The finale, so episode. Snowball fight? Or no, no, that's not. Uh, end of the war, season eight. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. Where all the guns blow up in their hands. and Yeah, that's okay. the one. We, we all watched that together and were so uh, uh, yeah, underwhelmed. So <laughs> yeah. Um, that actually, okay, now I'm going to go off into, into something else for a sec. But. <laughs> Okay, I was listening right to this uh, one of the directors of uh, on the office, Paul Feig, who I uh, was talking about the dinner party episode, which is now renowned as like one of the best episodes of the series. But um, really, yeah, because wow. it, it's so well done. But at the time it came out, people really didn't like it because it's so uncomfortable to watch, um, and that's kind of what makes it so good. Yeah. But what he was talking about was the fact um, of like getting over that something exists and then you can enjoy it a lot more. And so at first when it came out, cause it felt so different to the show and, and it was like so over the top people didn't like it too much, but once they sort of got past the fact that it was a thing and then went back and watched it again, knowing what it was, they really enjoyed it. Um, so I've found that to be the case for, for a lot of season eight and the finale and stuff like it's a, a Big letdown of a finale, but once you know what to expect, I think there's a lot there to to get out of it and to enjoy. Um, yeah. If you're not expecting a big battle and you kind of know what you're in for, so yeah, that's my two cents. But you disagree? Look, you put lipstick on a pig. <laughs> it's still a pig. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's a hard yeah. thing to win me over. It's very much like kind of saying like tattoo regret in a way, like you know. You've got the tattoo, so you may as well just enjoy it. You know, I guess you could laser it off. But like Mm. the idea being that a person could look back at it in five years and go, oh, look at what an idiot I was. I got this tattoo. But like now it's kind of funny to me. It's still a dreadful tattoo. It's just (laughs) your opinion about it. (laughs) Exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, This is, I mean, it's my last Jedi sore spot. (laughs) But like it's not really fair to to make things like that and then say to someone, I'll let it age well and then you'll like it in a couple, you know. In the next. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying that, and and this conversation, like with the office, was because now fans really like it and they regard yeah. it as a really good episode. Um, and it was just an explanation for that reaction. But so I don't think the Walking Dead people are necessarily saying that. But just me as a as a fan, I'm saying like I've found that to be the case that I enjoyed a lot more now that yeah. I know what I'm in for. So yeah, yeah, um, that is a good thing at the end of the day. Yeah, for sure. And and that's it. Like, even at, at its worst, it's still a good show mm. compared to a lot of other stuff that's out there. So, mm. oh, yeah. so yeah, there's always that. But uh, just one small thing. At the very start of the episode, uh, Negan's talking to Father Gabriel and, he just, and he's really cocky at this point because he thinks he's got everything under control and he just starts off by saying, Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, oh, so many good touches. <laughs> uh, I just like that. I, I can't go into explaining why I like it. Classic Negan. Good. Classic Negan. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. Um, did you guys have anything you wanted to talk about from previous seasons, Liam? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> we, we we'll, come, we'll come to you soon. I, uh, I have two now after your train of thought there. I've okay. got one from before. My first one was, and I feel like we've spoken about this before, so forgive me, but uh, you're going to be able to tell me the episode and all that jazz. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> just a given at this point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. For those listening who haven't heard our back catalogue, Ben has an amazing gift of being able to tell you exactly. Like We'll tell him a scene and he will tell you the episode name. He's a freak. It, it's crazy. <laughs> it's so cool. Uh, Anywho, uh, Daryl and Rick are fighting with uh, the cops that are in that hospital with the pluses on the thingos. Yeah. And uh, Daryl's getting into a bit of a scrap with one of the guys and uh, it's so many times he gets close to being bit yeah. by that charred walker. 
in the end manages to stick his eyes, uh, his fingers in its eyes, and uses it like a like big mo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, clobbers the guy in the face. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that was my first one. I'm like, yep, that was that was tense. Like, oh, and he's gonna get he's bit. So, yeah, he sticks his finger yeah. in the mouth yeah. at one point and uh, pulls it out. Just oh, oh, so thing. close. Oh. But uh, the other one was where I believe it was Dwight. Dwight saved. Was it Tara by shooting her with an arrow? Yeah, I mean the non-tainted yeah, arrow. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in that sort of same vein of obviously all-out war. Yeah, I remembered that part. I'm like, ah. Yeah. Because when I rewatched it recently, I'd forgotten about that completely. I remember that being quite a big thing from what I've read, being very big in the comics that they dip all their weapons in walker blood. Yeah. But yeah, I felt the first time I watched it, that wasn't really much of a thing. It, it right. was over in the blink of an eye. But yeah, they yeah. did actually use it for a little bit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, good old Dwighty boy. It save, was save really kind of isolated to the one episode because they made a whole sequence out of it, out of everyone asleep in Hilltop and then mm. like half of them turned to walkers in the middle of the night um, just because they had yeah. been scratched by the weapon. But yeah, it didn't really go much past that. Hey? I retract my statement. It was very short-lived. <laughs> <laughs> but I forgot that Dwight saved Tara by shooting her. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, no, it's cool. Um... Wait, what was the first thing you were saying? Because you said two different things. The first one was the bowling ball walk yeah. ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was just thinking as well, like, imagine being the extra playing that <laughs> walker if you accidentally bite Norman Reedus' hand. Uh, <laughs> you'd probably turn around and punch him. <laughs> uh, Come here. Isaac, have you got anything? Yeah, um, I, I'm pretty sure I've already brought up my first one um, about Carol growing her hair out. Um, in the later yeah, season, yeah. I think I have maybe just I'm about. Sure. I think in the earlier ones, she said she shaved it to like stop her husband from like grabbing her. Yeah, or something. yeah that's right. Yeah, so just her learning to trust again, and yeah, she's with Ezekiel at the time, so it's like yeah, for yeah. sure, it's a really nice touch. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But the one that I remember, I look back and I look um, back on fondly is this. This is at the time where Shane and Rick are like they're really at each other's throats, right? And they go off on some supplier and I forget what for and they're like, they really get into it. And at one point they get like um, besieged by like walkers and Shane just yeets this massive wrench. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and like Rick barely ducks it, like it nearly knocks yeah. him straight out of the park. And like later on they're talking and Rick just says something like, you know, you're going to have to do a lot better than a wrench or something like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Because Shane and Rick were fighting and, and Shane was sort of threw that out of anger towards Rick. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, that's classic. It's a uh, massive wrench. wrench yeah. too. Huge, yeah. Because at first I thought like, oh, is he playing it off like it was in the fight against the walkers and he was just trying to, and he could have said, oh, it was an accident. But like mm. Rick actually saying, you're going to have to do better than that. Really? Well, that was what kind of started the whole, because that let all the walkers out by smashing the window. So oh, was, okay. You know, it wasn't, uh, I was trying to kill the walkers and almost hit you. It was like very much deliberately okay. <laughs> thrown towards Rick. So, Gee. Yeah. Rough. Like, oh, mate, Shane. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not Loose messing cannon. around throwing a wrench at someone. <laughs> Loose cannon. Those things are heavy as well, at least yeah. from what I've been told, especially the big ones. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even the little wrenches, like they're solid chunks of... Whatever they're made of, they're <laughs> heavy. So a big one. Yeah. Those are like phone line... Electricity pole, like yeah, un right. unloosen things. Oh, okay. Unloosen yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> I, I miss Shane. Man. Yeah. Yeah, good old Shane. Uh, have you seen? Uh, I see him in movies all the time. Like, or once in a while, at least he'll pop up in something. Mm. Uh, the Ford Punisher, versus yeah. Ferrari. I watched recently. He was in that. Um, yeah, Punisher. Fury, the tank one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Have you guys seen him much? Wolf of Wall Street was probably the last one I saw him in. Is he in that? Yeah, right. He was also in that boxing one with uh, Robert De Niro versus Sylvester oh, Stallone, I think. Okay. Uh, that trains him up. Yeah, he gets around, hey. Yeah. <laughs> Busy guy. Great yeah. on him. Cool. All right, well, I think we'll end it there. But thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, unless you had something else to say, Isaac, you looked like it. Just like, you know, if people were to plug in, then that yeah. would be a very human thing to do. Prove to <laughs> us you're not a walker. Or oh, one of yeah. those crazy, nappy, crawling oh. around things. Uh, yeah, yeah, creepy Tarzan vibes. 
Yeah. Oh, actually, yes. Yeah. One other thing, just a neat touch. Sure. You notice walkers in general have overgrown messy hair, right? The mm. messiness, of course, but... yeah. Somebody told me even when you die, your nails and hair continue to yeah, grow. Yeah, yeah, it's true. What? <laughs> Is that true? Because I thought that the science behind that was you start to decay and shrivel up a little bit. So it looks like it's growing, but you're just sort of decomposing and shrinking. But like the length of your Ooh. hair? How does that work? Ooh. Well, yeah, let, let's look that up. Yeah. I, I thought it was true, but hey, maybe you're right. Because I would think both. Like obviously they're like decaying and shriveling up. Mm. It would obviously only go on for so long. Yeah. But, um, well, much yeah. like, well, they're rooted into the, I don't know, if they'd still be like drawing nutrients from the stuff that was in your body and growing out that way. Oh, okay, okay. Keratin, what is it? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, yeah, someone let us know if it's, if it's verified or not. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. We could do like a <laughs> rudimentary Google right here on our yeah, yeah. Every, Especially in last week's episode, every time I go to Google something, I always forget to come back to it. So there were like three tangents last episode where I went to look something up and then it didn't happen. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to not go for it anymore. <laughs> But yeah, Isaac's, Isaac's Your hair and nails face. grow when dead. Hair and fingernails may appear longer after death, but not because they are still growing. Oh, ah, yeah. Golden death. lamb. You're Dehydration all causes the skin and other soft tissues to shrink. Yeah, okay. Dr. Liam. Mate. This is what I do every day of my life. <laughs> saving no, lives. Spinning, no, I was going to say spinning facts, but. Oh. <laughs> and saving lives. Yes. But yes. It, it is true, right, that your ears. Always keep growing throughout your life, even when the rest of your body stops, which is why old people have big ears. Is it that they're growing or the skin is just stretching? I don't know, <laughs> something like that. I'm trying to compensate <laughs> for the fact that they're old and can't hear properly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All righty. <laughs> on that note, oh, on that note, thank you very much for lending us your ears. So nice little segue there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's nice. See, we didn't did look that. impressed. Um, we yeah, we definitely appreciate it. Head to turnsounds.com. You can uh, either send us a, a message or you can look at plugging in there and we will see you next week. Well, Isaac may not see you next week because yeah. he's got a, a baby on the way, which is very yeah. exciting. Yeah, um, I don't I don't know what the in universe name for a kid is in Walking Dead, but we went with Judith. Kids, oh yeah, a little yeah. ass kicker. Little yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a little yeah. ass kicker on the way. Yeah. Uh, any day now, really. Very exciting. Yeah. So, so we've only got two more episodes until uh, till the show goes on break anyway. Um, but, yeah, you'll probably just have Liam and I for the next two and looking forward to joining back up with Isaac when the show comes back next year. Mm, yeah. Mm. All righty. Well, thank you so much and we'll catch you next week. Who have we been? Yeah, well. Oh, yeah. I've been Ben. <laughs> I'm still Isaac. And I am always Dr. Liam. Uh, just keep walking. <laughs> 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 <laughs>